How many people actually make a living, even a modest one, playing poker? What percentage of poker players are winners? These are a few questions new poker players may ask while starting their journey through the poker landscape. Well, there is no reliable research on either subject, at least nothing since the poker explosion. The exact percentage of long-term poker winners cannot be known. However, if you factor in rake and the fact that variants can make players quit during a losing streak, the actual number of players who are profitable over their entire lifetime is almost certainly very small, likely somewhere around the 15% mark. If you think about it logically, losers are much more likely to quit poker and thus make up for a large percentage of players represented in active sample size. Basically, if a person is winning, he or she is much more likely to play a larger sample size over a longer time. In poker, the long term is one of those concepts that is completely subjective. Even so, what it boils down to is the number of hands played where one can be confident that he or she is either definitively a winner or a loser. For live players who might play somewhere around 30,000 hands a year, if they're lucky, the long term typically starts to come into focus at around 100,000 hands. However, since they're playing just one table in typically really soft games, you can expect the average live winning player's win rate to be higher than the average winning online player. For multi-tabling online players, the long term begins to reach at about 250,000 hands. Due to short term variance, the actual win rate might be off by a big blind or three during a sample of this size, but the overall trajectory should be clear. Another important question that stems up is how many people make a decent living playing poker, which could be defined as a $50 to $100,000 per year after deducting poker player expenses like the cost of traveling to and from casinos, food and lodging, dealer's tips, etc. As we have discussed earlier, about 15% of the population are winners. But many of those players are not winning enough to support themselves. If the question is, what percent of people who play poker in casinos or online are winners and are being able to support themselves entirely on poker earnings, then the answer is probably somewhere around 5% or even lower. A lot of people will try poker once in a casino without knowing how to play and the vast majority of those will go home broke. The same is true, though to a lesser degree, online. If the question is, what percent of people who take the game seriously are winners, then that's a tough question. Of course, we'd have to define what it means to take the game seriously. You could say anybody who has read one poker book, but that would exclude guys like Patrick Antonius who has never read a poker book in his life. So, leaving it as a subjective definition, I would guess 25-30% to 30 of people who take the game seriously are winners. This brings us to the question, how many players actually win enough every year to earn at least $50,000? I would say, very few. There are a bunch of pros playing the Vegas 5100 games and higher and most of them probably qualify. Then there are the online pros. Most of them are young guys who started to play poker really early and became good enough so that they didn't start looking for jobs. All in all, it would make about 2-3% of the entire poker population. But this is a highly unscientific guess. As suggested earlier, there really is no reliable information on this because this stuff obviously isn't documented anywhere. Well, this raises another question. Why not? How is that in an activity where every possible result is calibrated to an infinite number of decimal places, nobody can answer basic questions about how many poker players are successful on any level? Well, the answer is simple. Poker players lie. There are many reasons beyond self-delusion why poker players lie. Number one, to hide their income from the IRS. Number two, to hide income or extravagant losses from their spouses or significant others. Number three, table image. Losers don't scare anybody and big winners scare away the fish. Number four, self image. Some people can't play with confidence unless they feel like winners. Others can't play their best unless driven by horrific visions of failure. Number five, habit. Similarly, there are many reasons why few casino and online players can win long term and why even fewer can make a decent living at the game. Number one, lack of technical knowledge. Most players don't bother to learn how to play correctly in the first place. To be fair, the real motivations for most players have little to do with making money. 
most players are looking for one or more of the following. Some fun, a distracting hobby, excitement, and prove that God loves them. Number 2. Lack of self-knowledge. If you are unable to figure out and accept how good or not good you are, you will be unable to find the proper level of game in which to play. Number 3. Lack of discipline. Most players, even those who actually possess an A game, cannot maintain their A game for long. Number 4. Major leaks. To put it mildly, poker tends to attract people with addictive personalities. It is not uncommon even at the Hall of Fame level to find poker players who lost their entire bankroll by indulging in gambling activities. However, the main reason so few players will even show a long-term profit, minimal or enough to live on, is number 5. The Rake The Rake casinos and online sites charge, which is the money they take out of each pot, allows them to stay in business most profitably. Consider the following example and the inevitability that follows. Generally speaking, most casinos and online sites will take out $4 out of any reasonable size pot. If you play, say, 60 hands per hour in a 10-handed 10-20 game online, the site will wind up taking about $240 out of the game. So, in theory, if you play with the same 10 players for 40 hours over a week and all the players are fairly matched in ability and all have a similar amount of luck, good and bad, during that time, the casino or site would have taken about 10,000 bucks out of the game by the end of the week. This means that if each player starts with a $1,000 bankroll, which is a reasonable amount to take part in a 1020 game, by the end of the week, everybody would be completely broke. And if you play in two or more games simultaneously, especially if there are 600 games or worse, high speed games, it might not even take a week. In other words, even if you are an average player in a game, let alone be a bad one, you must lose money over a long period of time. The only way you can win any money at all is if you consistently play with the people who are not as good as you are. And this is hard to do because even if you find such a game and even if you're able to correctly evaluate your own talent level and even if you're able to consistently play your patient A game without getting bored or going on tilt over a bad run or getting too tired or drinking too much or not getting enough sleep or just plain freaking out, the likelihood is that the players you are so much better than eventually will quit the game or go broke or both. And realistically, the percentage of players who can consistently dominate a typical 1020 game is quite small under the best of circumstances. That said, poker is still quite profitable in 2021, though those who are making money consistently are usually putting in insane hours to improve their games. In the poker boom days, most players were absolutely awful and knew nothing about the general poker concepts. If you had even a moderate understanding of general poker concepts, you were almost guaranteed to make money. In this day and age, nearly everyone has benefited from the surge in popularity of poker education sites, coaching sites, etc. If you want to be better than those players, you will need to go the extra distance to get better than them. The draw of poker back in the boom days was that you could make full-time money while just playing part-time. Now, if you want to make money that will be equivalent of a full-time job, you will most likely need to work more than full-time hours. You will need to practice proper bankroll management, avoid tilt, and likely say goodbye to some personal relationships, etc. You can certainly make a living playing poker in 2021, although it won't be easy. This video is powered by Bluff the Spot, the best place to learn how to win at poker from actual high-stake coaches like MMA Sherdog. Check the link in the description.